Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Becky Lynch officially challenges Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins doesn't officially challenge Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And I guess Elias is a heel now. I'm Ollie Davis, give us a subscribe, press the thumbs up button, let us know what you thought of Raw in the comments below because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. And click the eye above my head to give your rating where you can choose from Rawsome, Core, Average, Poor and Rawful. As I review the 28th of January 2019 edition of Monday Night Raw in about four minutes. Seth Rollins opened this week's episode the same way he closed the previous night's Royal Rumble by challenging the WrestleMania 35 sign. Oh, I'm gonna burn you down, you big stupid logo. Spoil Sport Triple H explained Rollins can't face an inanimate large placard at the biggest show of the year though, and he'll need to choose either WWE Champion Daniel Bryan or Universal Champion Brock Lesnar tonight. This was actually a rather heartwarming segment, with Trips appearing genuinely emotional for Seth winning his first Rumble. But Dean Ambrose spoiled the moment, goading Trips into booking a match between him and Seth with the cutting line, you need to ask permission from your father-in-law first. Seth then won their match decisively with a curb stomp, and Nia Jax threw Dean out of the ring afterwards, which I'm sure has absolutely nothing to do with Ambrose reportedly leaving the company soon. Subscribe and enable notifications so you'll get the rest We'll talk news later today for what actually happened backstage. Jax then beat up some women for a change, with her and Tamina qualifying for the women's tag team elimination chamber match over Alexa Bliss and Mickey James, who are friends again, I guess. Aaron Corbin versus Kurt Angle was up next, where the Olympic hero seemed set for a Hiroshi Tanahashi style one last redemption run in WWE, which he started by losing to Corbin hitting a deep six. It's not even his finisher! Baron continued to beat Kurt down after the match, stalling his comeback story right out the gate. Speaking of stalling stories, Finn Balor cut an in-ring promo next, saying he might not have beaten the beast, but he made the beast believe. Which is quite an optimistic interpretation of Lesnar giving him three German suplexes and an F5 after their match. I'm sure Brock's positively rattled. It seems Balor's main event run was never intended to last after the Rumble, with him being cemented firmly in the mid-card here when Bobby Lashley came to beat him up. Kurt Hawkins extended his losing streak to tag team matches next, where the Revival beat him and Zack Ryder in Raw's future All Elite Wrestling division. We got a promo saying WrestleMania 30 35 is now 69 days away. <laughs> 69. So Elias is a heel again. Just three months after randomly turning babyface in October, he started trashing the crowd for not giving him the applause he deserves, even though they totally were. Jeff Jarrett came down, thankfully not dressed like a decorative lampshade this time, joined by a Becky Lynch t-shirt wearing Road Dog, because making her a babyface star was always the story we were telling. To sing their own song to the audience. Elias wasn't a fan though, and smashed guitars over both their backs. Mojo Rawley blamed himself in the mirror for not being a effectively showcased on TV next because it's definitely Mirror Mojo's fault, absolutely nobody else's. And even if it was someone else's fault, which it isn't, it'd be Baron Corbin's. The Riot Squad's Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan shockingly beat hastily thrown together Frank and team Dana Brooke and Natalia, meaning they qualify for the chamber match. It was almost as one-sided as Ronda Rousey versus the post-Royal Rumble crowd. Get in botch promo segue. Ronda struggled through her pre-scripted promo while the audience loudly cheered for Becky Lynch. It got so bad, it seemed Bailey was sent out early to save her. They ended up having a really decent match, with Bailey even locking in the bank statement, but Ronda was always going to win. What wasn't so predictable was Becky then coming out to a huge ovation, as Triple H had said earlier, she'd decide her WrestleMania match the following night on SmackDown. Rousey made up for her bad promo start by just intensely screaming gibberish in Becky's face, while Lynch just smirked in reply. It was an awesome segment with two hugely over wrestlers, and it was finally them made official. We're getting Becky versus Ronda at WrestleMania. I've missed Braun Strowman wrestling on Raw, but I haven't missed Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin's weird heel partnership. Corbin caused the DQ, and both beat up Strowman afterwards. The main event was reserved for Seth Rollins choosing his WrestleMania opponent, which both Brock and Daniel
Daniel Bryan were in the arena for. Even Eric Rowan was there. We never got to see Bryan though, as Brock just decided to maul Seth hitting F5 after F5 as Raw went off air. I think he's still giving him F5s now. I want next week's Raw to open in a different city with Brock still giving Seth F5s. While the Elias turn is dumb and the midcard storylines are lacklustre, Monday's main event scene is very strong right now. And for that reason, this week's Raw is core. WWE apparently banned All Elite Wrestling shirts at Royal Rumble. Click the video on screen now to find out what happened. And support us on Patreon to vote for mine and Luke's Wrestle League punishment music video. I've been Ollie Davis and that was wrestling.